The next three demos, 6, 7, and 8, are going to deal with formulas and functions, which is sometimes the most difficult part of Excel. So we're looking at this table now, and I'm interested in what are the totals for each of my students. And there are several ways of, of doing that. And we'll look at these ways side by side here. So I'm going to select G6, and I'm just going to type in the equations that add up the total for Betty. So here is a simple way, the same way you would probably do it if you had a calculator with you. Just put in the numbers, adding them up, hit the Enter key, and you have your solution. Now another way of doing it, instead of just using the raw numbers that are in the cell, is doing it by what is referred to as cell reference. So instead of using the numbers that are in the cell, I'm going to use the cell name. B6 plus C6. Notice each one, in a sense, comes up with a little different color, just identifying. And over here, as I typed in those cell references, they were highlighted uh, by that square around the cell. Hit the Enter key. There we go. Same answer. That's good. It should be the same answer. Something went wrong if it wasn't. Another way of doing it is using this icon up here known as auto sum. And auto sum displays, as it shows here, displays the selected cells um, as a sum. Now there's more under auto sum than just sum. You also have average, count, max, and minimums. We'll look at those later. But right now we're just going to use auto sum. So watch what happens when I click on auto sum. Puts in an equal sum, that's the function, then there's a parentheses, and inside the parentheses we have B6 colon, remember the colon means through, H6. Now why is that? I only want to add up these five numbers, not all of them. Well, when you use auto sum, it automatically grabs all of the numbers, either to the left or above, if I had numbers above uh, this cell, and inserts them into the parentheses. So all I have to do is say, well, I don't really want G and H. That would definitely be wrong. I just want to add up B6, so I click on B6 and drag across and notice what's going on in the sum that D's change to E's change to F. Now I have the correct numbers in the parentheses for it to add up. Hit the Enter key and 175. That's what I should expect. All three are the same. So what's the difference? What advantages there to using one over the other. Well here's the advantage right now. What if I change this 45 right here in D6 to 40? What would I expect to happen? Well I expect all of my cells that are the totals to go down 5 points. Hit the Enter key. Notice only two of them went down. The two that were working with the cell references. The one that worked with the raw numbers did not go down because it was using 45, not 40. So the advantage is use cell referencing when you are working with an equation or a formula. Use cell referencing not necessarily the raw numbers. So I'm going to delete those, erase those out, just clear it. This clear button up here. Clear all. And I'm going to put in my equal sum. I like that. 
equal sum. Now I could again just hit the auto sum up here, but I want to show you what happens here. As I start typing sum, notice all this that shows up. These are all functions that are built into Excel. We're not going to look at any of these, just the sum. That's all we're concerned about. But I just want to show you when you start typing something, it automatically brings it up. So what do we have here? Again, B6 colon F6 and parentheses enter. So we have the answer to the total of Betty's five points right here. The other advantage of cell referencing is when I copy and paste this equation down to the next spot for Donald. Watch what happens. Copy, go down to G7, paste. I'll click on G7 now, and what do I have? Notice B7 and F7 were up here. Now, when you, whenever you copy and paste that marquee idea, you can hit the escape key that gets rid of that. So that's okay. Up here, B6 through F6. Down here, B7 through F7. It automatically compensates for the move that I made. One cell down. So all of the cell references increase by 1, B6 to B7, and so on. Now if I had a whole huge class of 40 people, then I wouldn't want to do this copy and paste thing. Well, here's the other advantage, the nice thing about using the pull down handle here. This handle, fill handle, when I click and drag, not only does it work for filling series, it also works for copying cells. So I just release, go here to my options, note it says copying cells, exactly what I want. Click somewhere else, and now notice as we move down, looking at the formula bar, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, tens, and elevens. The totals are there as I would want them to be. Now let's create some information underneath this that looks at these numbers in a different way. First off, we'll look at what were the possible points. Notice that the format of the text stays as it was above. So we've kind of following the pattern here even though when I type it, it's not until I hit the Enter key. Maximum and Minimum. Now that I have those four in there, I want to change them a little bit. We're going to align them to the right. So they're over there. I'm going to put in the values for the possible points now. Using my arrow keys, I can move to the right. The average again comes out of the auto sum. Remember, I showed you that a little earlier in this pull down. There's an average function. I just use it, say average. So notice it only grabbed the number right above it. And the reason it only grabbed that number is because there's a space here. So it only goes as high as the numbers. Uh, continue in a sense. So, But I don't want that number, I want these numbers. What's the average on this first assignment? So once again, I click and drag down from B6 through B11, right there, hit the Enter key, and I have my answer. Maximum, same thing. Go over here, what's the max value of all my scores up here? Who got the highest score? or what was the highest score, and the minimum. What was the lowest score obtained? Notice I have to keep so you get a little practice here selecting the right cells that you want. Now that I have these properly placed, I can actually select all three of them and move them across 
to get that information for each column. There we go. Now, we've got some decimal problems here. So let's reduce the number of decimal points here. Remember up here, increase, decrease. So we're going to reduce that to zero decimal points. So there we go, having all of my information in there. Let's do one more thing to make this look a little bit better. And we're going to offset possible points. We're going to put a line at the bottom of each one of these cells. So that's a bottom border. Just to separate it a little bit. 